across she works. Well, there's no toilet on the boat. She's back to old school. You gotta put your ass over the rail and mmm. I don't want you carrying about, Glenn. It's perfectly natural to actually put your bum over the side. It's one earth. You get a bit of air up the ass, don't worry about it. Just barbaric. It's just look, go and grab a bucket and go down the engine room or, or do something, but I love my toilet heaps because that's my out time to table. If he starts talking, give him a bit of and go down there and on the toilet and read a magazine. It's just no. Nah. Can't say any more about it, otherwise it'll probably start spilling. Work, you. It's making a noise, that's a bonus. We haven't got any water yet, though. Glenn's got the pump working, but it still isn't sucking in water. You might get a deck bucket of salt water. And it won't flush. Fixed? Sort of. Been sitting on one of these. But neither Glenn or Jake want to be the first to test it. Surely to Christ you'd have to do a by now, wouldn't you? No, I'm pretty right at the moment. <laughs> I'm hoping you'd go first. <laughs> well, I'm you'd go first. Southwest Cape, Tasmania. Hey, day one, first pot of the day, we have it full and uh, see what brings us. Skipper Pete is one of the best in the business, and now he has two secret weapons. A new 3D plotter. Yeah, this is the um, new mapping system. It's just like playing a computer game. I can actually see on the screens where the pots were just shot. And a new deckhand. Be careful that uh, circle shine there, Matthew. Oh, it's been a few months. Give me, uh, give me one or two, missus. But Matthew hasn't been at sea for a while. Oh, yeah. Fuck, missed it. And is a little rusty. If Matthew misses with a grappling hook, Pete will have to circle back in the boat for another go. The moment of truth. They pull the last pot first. but it's full of undersized lobsters. After that one. About the same as last night. Same numbers? Yep. It's illegal to keep female lobsters in the winter breeding season, and you can't keep undersized males. The maximum fine runs into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't, think, I don't know what I picked the measure up for. Pretty open. Me either. You generally call the undersized fish rats because they're pretty small. You don't want rats, do you? Throw them back. Absolutely nothing. Fuck with all we got there is a couple of strangers. And it keeps getting worse. Yeah. I reckon we'll have to get used to that for a little bit. Bit of a loss today. I think I'll be going in the negative territory. If they don't catch any lobsters, they'll be in the red by $7,000. The bill comes very big quickly. That's zero out of ten. If they get no lobsters for the entire shot, the law of the sea says the captain will have to do a run of shame around the deck, naked. Unwritten rule, you drop the dax, but uh, yeah, I don't know about that, she's bloody cold around here. The Anson's Bay vomit fest has finally stopped. Glenn and Jake also think they fixed the toilet. But there's a standoff. I reckon I'm going to have to be the first one to use it. Oh, you broke, have you? <laughs> that's <No>. good. <laughs> Been long enough. <laughs> oh, that's good. You can test her out and see how she goes then. <laughs> that's good. I was wondering who was going to break first. <laughs> I'll grab the bucket, eh? Well...
You want to hope it works? A small but important victory for the crew of Anson's Bay. The Friars, south of Bruny Island. It's late afternoon and Decky Tabor appears to have lost a pot overboard. Hey! Wasn't my fault. You hanged it over the side too far. Squizzy's not happy. Some days I just want to chop that finger off. Oh, mate. Tabor's in luck. Lucky it was tied on. It happens, though. The rough seas can work two ways. They can either get the brindles out from their dens or make them hide. But sometimes we'll fire them up and sometimes... You know, they won't, they won't move. They'll stay in their dens and say... Oh, we got a couple. Ooh, yeah. Squizzy's gamble to motor out early is starting to pay off. The brindles are running. One thirty for the shot. That's two hundred and fifty two for the day. I'm happy, baby. That takes Squizzy's total to 426, about $33,000 worth. Yeah, baby! We're smashing it. Woohoo! But it's well short of the $110,000 Squizzy needs to clear before the end of the month. Skipper Steve Hersey is stuck at port and needs to get out to sea to restock the family's restaurant business. I'm ready to go to sea, but the boat's not, so I'm sitting in port, not making any money, stress is building, can't go to work. It really sucks. There's not a lot in the tanks at Hersey's at the moment. Yeah, we'll get it all timed up properly and all the valves and that adjusted, and hopefully we're, we're in action by hopefully. 5 o'clock. Touch wood. Yeah. The joys of having a boat. Exactly right. Steve is based in northern Tasmania. The rest of the fleet is hunting in southern Tasmania. The problem that we've had all winter has just been the weather, not being able to fish. As you can see out to the west here, there's a fairly big low pressure system building, so it's going to create a very, looks like a nodderly flow, and where we like to work up on the northwest here, it's just not going to work. Seas will be big. Too big to head out too dangerous to hunt in close for big reds. The waiting game continues for the Ella Rose. Not so for the bold contender. Squizzy's leading the tally board with 426 lobsters. Anson's Bay and Kaikoura are both still motoring to Matsika Island. The Triton is still waiting to bag its first cray, or Pete will have to do a run of shame. It won't take long to count them. If every pot in the shot comes up empty, Pete will be forced to do a run of shame around the deck, naked. I wouldn't like to see any of our skippers in the show do a run of shame because just think of their physique. Ah. Young males. Another young male. No good. He's no good. He's no good either. What are you looking for, Pete? Nothing here to look for. No. There's no reason to have the bloody measure him here either. Oh, hey, yeah. He 
might get our first one. Woohoo! Are we? There's one. Pot 17, first grade. Oh, he's just the winner, that one. I'm very happy because I don't have to drop my underwear. If you get a zero shot, you're going to drop them. You're going to give those crayfish names, are you, Pete? Yeah, one and two. Oh, ho I'm getting excited here. You want to chuck the biggest one overside, Pete? Told you too confident. Shouldn't get so excited to measure them. Oh, hang on, I've got one. There you go. It's only just size, though. Not a good result. It weighs, it pays. But there's a silver lining. OK, Danny, thank you. This is Pete's catch of the day. Doesn't come close to Squizzy's catch of the day. That'd be a kilo. Pretty close to a kilo, so that'd be 100 bucks. $100 for that one. It's the last pot of the shot. Size? Oh, you be pretty close. You be pretty close. You can do the honest, Pete. Oh, Jesus. There you go. That's a tenth of a cray a pot. Well, that's everything. It's about four kilos for the day. That is one of my worst shots. For about 14 years, I reckon. So we won't make any money today. We just have memories. Next time. On this full of the moon, that's when they're most prevalent. Just legs and bloody tails and things going all directions. It's total carnage as the underwater predators attack. Nothing big enough. Massive pest to us. That's pretty scary. Have one of those things coming at you costing the skippers thousands.